Hello, explorers. I'm Shannon, and these online learning labs are part of our Spark series, where we hope to help spark a love of learning. If you're looking for our full Spark unit study guides with learning extension ideas, book lists, and project tutorials, head over to our website. Are you ready to spread your wings and fly into another amazing learning adventure? Today, we're going to look more closely at how bird wings work. But before we dig in, I always like to start out by highlighting a few books that have been inspiring in our study. These are some of my favorites. I love the work of Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. The book series is gorgeous. And if you don't have some of these books, I highly recommend getting your hands on them. Birds can do something that most of us only dream of. They can fly. And it's largely thanks to their fantastic wings. Okay, let's do a quick physics lesson. But don't worry, there are no tests at the end of this, and this is far from boring. There are four forces that can act on anything and everything that tries to fly. Whether that's a bird, a butterfly, an airplane, or a friend doing a somersault on a trampoline. The four forces of flight are lift, thrust, drag, and gravity, or weight. To achieve a straight and level flight, the force of lift must equal the force of gravity and the force of thrust must equal the force of drag. So what does that mean and how does that all work? Let's first look at the shape of a bird's wing to get some clues. Have you ever noticed how it's curved on top and flatter on the bottom? That special shape is called an airfoil. When a bird flaps its wings, air rushes over and under it. But guess what? The air going over the wing has to travel farther and faster than the air below it. And this creates a difference in pressure. And voila, liftoff. That's right, that's how birds fly upwards, or how we say they achieve lift. But what about going forward? Well, when a bird pushes down and backwards with its wings, it propels or pushes itself forward. That's called thrust. But as air pressure passes over the wings, friction is generated and begins to slow the bird down. That's called drag. So the sweet spot for getting something to fly is finding the right balance between the forces of lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. Oh, and another thing, you might need to know how to slow down, how to steer, or how to stop. Birds have amazing tail feathers that act like a rudder on a boat. This helps guide them and steer them in their flight. And when they spread their wings and tail wide to increase air resistance or drag, it's like applying brakes in the sky. Pretty amazing, right? So next time you see a bird soaring high in the sky, I hope you think about the incredible science that's helping them glide. They're demonstrating the four forces of flight up there. Lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. And they make it look so effortless. Today we're gonna make a really fun automaton project. Automata projects are fun engineering challenges and they're great for kids and adults. Project designs can range from simple to complex and the enjoyment and satisfaction comes from spending time tinkering and adjusting in order to get the desired results. So take your time on this, have fun and experiment. Some of my favorite automata projects explore movement through the simple, clothespin. Clothespins have a limited range of motion. You can go up and down. If you turn it, you can go side to side or front to back. Let me show you a few examples of some automata using clothespins so you can see what I mean. Here's a simple automaton using an illustration of a bird going down to its nest and I'm using the clothespin in the down and up position. If you simply turn the clothespin for the side view, you'll see the side to side motion like this. To me, that looks an awful lot like a woodpecker pecking into a tree. But today I wanna to show you an automata project that uses the clothespin going up and down to create flapping wings on a bird. The key to make this project successful is figuring out just where you need to glue the paper support in order for 
the bottom part of our clothespin to pull the wings downward. So for this project, you're gonna need a pencil, some scissors, the template, hot glue gun with glue sticks, or tape, and some markers. First step is to print the template onto a heavy cardstock paper. Cut each item out and then decorate your pieces however you'd like. Then you're gonna wanna fold your wings along the dotted lines. For this template, I don't have the dotted lines, but you'll see what I mean. It'll end up looking something like this. Now we're ready to begin assembling. You wanna glue the main part of the bird's body segment onto the clothespin like this. Next, you wanna glue one of your wings on the side like this. And you can repeat on the other side. Next, you wanna find the middle of your long paper strip and fold gently. It's important to find the middle because for this next step, we're gonna glue the paper strip onto the bottom of the clothespin in that smaller segment. We wanna be sure to try to get pretty well in the center if we can. This is a really important thing to note because if the paper strip goes on the back side of the clothespin, it's not gonna give us the movement we need. Now with the wing in the upright position, we can glue the thin paper strip onto it. Be sure that you're not gluing onto the fold itself, but above that, directly onto the upper part of that wing. Let's test it out. When you press to open the clothespin, the paper strip should pull on the underside of the wing, folding the wing down. Keep exploring, stay curious, and join us on our next adventure. Bye, friends.